Insiders, Watley and Harrison here from Actionable Insights with another video for the Priceless Update Summary uh, series. Uh, this is our April video, and in the last January, February, March videos that we put out for the Priceless Update, we asked for your feedback. And I have to say thank you because you guys responded, and many of you said that you absolutely love the new video series. So we are going to continue producing uh, these Priceless Update Summary videos. The goal of these series in general. The Xactimate price list adds new line items every month, makes changes to yields and text descriptions and whatnot. Our goal at Actionable Insights is to analyze what new line items came out, how are they meant to be applied. So with that in mind, let's jump into the April 2020 price list changes. Uh, on the left side of my screen, you'll see an Xactimate estimate open uh, with the April 20 price list for San Diego and all the new line items. On the right side, we have the eService Center link uh, that has the text changes that Xactimate puts out as here's the changes. So let's jump into the details here and start off with the very top. While the, I've got a COVID-19 PPE header here and new line items for uh, N95 masks and uh, disposable face shields in the HMR, WTR, and TCR category codes. Uh, under, I think I know why, but why were these line items added to the price list and how are they meant to be applied? Well, it relates to why nothing happened in February. There was exactly <laughs> bingo line items in February. And uh, one can infer that likely the pricing department was like, okay, this COVID-19 thing, not going away. Uh, we're, our users are going to need some line items. So they probably dropped a lot of what they were doing, started hustling on trying to assign some pricing and potentially yield to some of these line items. So interesting that they picked them up in all three categories, HMR, WTR, TCR. I think that's kind of a holdover from the fact that like almost every PPE, um, certainly anyone I can think of is like in all three of those categories. Uh, you know, for example, line item number five there, the, uh, the personal protective mask in 95 in the TCR, so trauma category. My guess is that line item will never actually be used. It will only be used erroneously because if you stick your crews in cleaning up dead bodies and alike, pretty sure you're going to put them in P100 respirators or better. So I don't think the N95 masks are cutting it, uh, but they did it probably just to keep things consistent. So it uh, makes sense. Why do you think, Harrison, um, they added them to all three categories and how would you apply it in a normal day-to-day -day scenario? Say if you're doing a pack out. Which category code do you think would apply most applicable? Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, HMR, WTR, TCR, hazardous material, water remediation, trimacroma, these are typical PPE application scenarios. So it does make sense. It's in line with the historical precedent of adding uh, these PPEs to those three categories. What's really interesting to note, uh, something that we highlight with the goggles every time that we teach, is that you'll note that the pricing for just N95 masks between HMR, WTR, and TCR here, they're all the same. This is a San Diego price list, it's $4.30. There is no change from category code to category code as to the pricing. And this part of the reason here, if I open up the components section for just the TCR line item, you'll see this is a material only line item. Therefore, there would be no change in between a labor trade rate because there's no labor involved. These are material only items. Uh, you asked me about content specifically. Which line item would I use to apply to contents technicians performing in a COVID-19 environment? Um, in my opinion, in, in Actionable Insights' opinion, the WTR category code is most similar to uh, a contents technician as to what they would be doing in the field. So in this particular case for contents workers, I would be applying the WTR PPM, uh, PPEM. Uh, it's important to note rough draft versus final draft here because if I presented you an estimate in final draft, you're not gonna see the category and selector codes. So regardless of which one I used, it's the same price because it's material open. And in rough draft, you would have that information and be able to see which category code. One thing and that's that why as a claims manager, I gotta have the rough draft because I don't know what you did. And then when you erroneously include an HMR PPE when everything else is WTR, it triggers a labor minimum, and then we can't even figure out exactly why that labor minimum is in there. I mean, that's like one of my pet peeves, right? Is that erroneous one PPE going under 
the wrong category. So keep your PPEs consistent, guys. There's very little reason why you would jump around within the categories uh, associated with your PPEs and be mindful of those labor minimums. Yeah, the other thing that I was thinking about, one thing that you wrote a paper on is that silica usage and the new OSHA regulations around silica, and it gives us space to teach more about the use of PPEs and repair. Which of these line items, for those repair technicians in the field performing in COVID-19, which line item here would be most appropriate to apply for potentially repair technicians uh, that would need these face masks and shields? You know, the pricing doesn't matter here. The optics do a bit. Uh, I think HMR is more applicable to that situation because it's a biological hazard. I've always warned my crews like to be so cautious around biological hazards. You and I have seen it with our, our former students getting uh, uh, hantavirus from rat droppings. Uh, that is some of the most real impact I've experienced in my career is folks picking up biological uh, hazards like viruses and, and bacteria in the field when compared to something that takes long-term exposure that exceeds a safe and permissible amount like lead and asbestos and mold. Not to say that it's great to expose yourself or your crews to outsized amounts of any of those things, but uh, typically you're not going to drop dead there the next day. With biological, you don't mess around. So I think HMR is probably a better fit, and thankfully it doesn't change the price. So with a little bit of explanation, I think you're good to go. But I wouldn't expect to get paid on any of these line items as a contractor without some explanation. And I would want that as a adjuster. Like, okay, fine. You're going to charge me for face shields. Okay. Like you better tell me why and be better, uh, be ready to support that with a deep link or a picture and so on. Yeah. You know, one thing that I've noted in some of our Xactimate Ninjas conversations in general, contractors are inherently forced to protect their employees more in this new environment and carriers are trying to adapt to this new regulations of PPEs and whatnot. Uh, contractors have to protect their employees now, they just have to, and carriers are trying to figure out how to change their own claims processes to be able to process these claims more efficiently and not be surprised by additional line items on the N95s and face shields and whatnot. So as you're mentioning, if you are using these new line items, which I imagine you are, uh, please add F9 notes to explain the purpose, reason, goals, communications between your team, CDC, OSHA, policyholder requirements, like whatever it may be. This is a new environment that we're working within. Uh, so be sure to explain the application of these new line items uh, in line with why they were added. And there's probably some sitting on the carrier side that are going, oh, great, just what I needed. I've got six new line items or PPEs that these folks are likely not even using anyhow. I'm not even sure that these line items are advantageous for contractors and as it relates to billing like this these line items you know are great because it's more accurate but what a contractor would default to is doing a full face mask by day and then the associated uh hepa or vapor gas cartridges which are going to exceed the cost of this face shield n95 arrangement anyhow so it's good that you've got the option hats off the pricing department for doing this swiftly but this is a good example of line items that you know we should be aware of they will probably be used on a regular basis but they will cer certainly won't increase claim cost in my view it, it might constrain it so i encourage those out there on the claim side, if you see these line items, like I would try to create space to process them. I, I'm not saying that the contractor should be ready to support it with forensic uh, photography, and F9 notes, because they shouldn't be approved. It's just been my experience that when adjusters see new line items they haven't seen, they have just have an immediate aversion. And so it's going to be on the contractors to take the time to educate the adjuster about why that's warranted and why the other option would otherwise be more expensive and they so thoughtfully selected for these line items because it represented what they were doing in the field and it actually helps uh, manage severity. 100%. The only other comment I want to add is I've seen some contractors online saying that the pricing for these line items is insufficient based on the global demand that in order to get these kind of face masks and shields it's inherently more expensive. So one thing to note out there as that the pricing of how to get these masks and shields changes based on the global supply and demand. Um, so good to know and at least identify, hey, are we being reimbursed properly for protecting our technicians and ultimately the policyholder as a part of restoring them uh, for this loss? Uh, I mean, 
yeah, N95 mask. Five bucks. Yeah, the price won't be that way forever because, you know, they're already doubling the price from what it is standard. But, yeah, they have been really expensive, and everything that I've been purchasing for the benefit of emergency backup, co emergency storage, uh, we've been playing – two or three X. So I don't know. I, I think it's fair. In, in it's fair. I, just, I like pointing it out as something to watch monitor as the market changes overall. Yeah. Let's jump to some new additions here in the blasting exposed framing line items. There are new line items for soda blasting and dry ice blasting specifically for exposed framing and then split up between floors and walls. And these were added to the HMR code and the WTR code. And to provide some context before we jump into these line items, I added here previously existing blasting line items that were already in the price list. And all six of these, from soda blasting, dry ice blasting, up to extra heavy, are in the CLN category code. And yep. so we now have some new line items here. What do you think about these dry ice, soda blasting, floor, walls, exposed framing line items? All right, first of all, I'm pumped up to see that we adopted these line items because I can't tell you how many times on both sides of the claim I've been having conversations about, well, if we're going to be doing dry ice blasting, is it the square footage of the lumber itself, the flooring or ceiling joist, or is it actually the square footage of the ceiling, so on. So we've transcended that uh, absolutely. And so that would be applied uh, with, say, the flooring, you would do a variable of F. And uh, with the walls, you know, of course, a variable of W. Yeah, so right, that, here in, right here in the additional item information of the new uh, soda blasting WTR line item for walls, the first thing says price per square footage of wall area, not surface area soda blasted. Yeah, and what, as, yeah, which is great. That, you can see the logic behind why these line items were adopted right there. Okay, to unpack it a little bit more, something I'm also excited about, we got rid of this notion of standard and heavy duty and extra heavy duty. I have no idea what the difference between heavy blasting and extra heavy duty blasting is. And those are situations that just create unnecessary impasse. Those line items were adopted, you know, 15 years ago in good faith, but it just didn't really help. So I, I like that we have moved towards just square footage, straight, either you're blasting it or you're not blasting it, okay? So I, I can't stand getting into a bait about what is heavy or not heavy in, in that regard. So that was a good move. They're probably going to retain the CLN, you know, soda blasting and dry ice blasting line items, but they're kind of ill-congruent, and I think they'll continue to create some confusion around it. Uh, I wonder now what you would do uh, if you were – say soda blasting in a water restoration environment and you're doing you know the open exposed framing that's great what happens when you get to a shear wall in the garage so a you know a five eighths inch piece of plywood that spans one of the exterior walls for the garage so what line based, item would you use yeah i mean based on the current available line items knowing that these new line items specifically call out exposed framing Mm -hmm. And I would likely have to, you know, go back to the CLN line items that previously existed. But, uh, you know, contractors know what that costs to dry ice soda blast that shear wall. And if that CLN line item isn't applicable or isn't close enough to what that activity is going to cost, then it's possible to apply one of the new exposed framing line items, uh, updating line item description or adding F9 note to explain why this line item would be a better fit for that particular activity. You are right, Wadley, that this has added some more confusion, but at least as you've already mentioned, you're pumped that these line items exist now because now we have some existing line items specifically for exposed framing that clarifies this is for the wall area, for the floor area, and nobody's making individual calculations on how much surface area is on each individual uh, frame that is being uh, blasted. So. Yes, uh, more line items that are related to old line items can cause confusion, but there is at least some uh, idea here in the additional item info notes giving some direction uh, and specifically for when you're dry ice blasting, soda blasting, these exposed framing areas, floors and walls. Uh, let's jump down to another new line item here. So as a unique one, tunneling under slab, uh, a bid item specifically, you know, this is an activity that occasionally happens in the claims process. Uh, it's been difficult to get paid back for it because there was no line item that existed. Uh, so similar to the thermal imaging line item that we've seen before, 
as a bid item. There at least is a line item that exists now that contractors and carriers can use to reimburse the policyholder as for any tunneling under slab activities that are performed as a part of the loss. Uh, I really wonder what the catalyst for that line item is. Because a lot of times when you reroute, say you have a plumber plumbing failure and you're going to reroute, the carrier doesn't owe for a lot of those activities to actually reroute the plumbing because it'd be more of under a maintenance issue. They'll cover the impact of that loss, but not necessarily the reroute. So tunneling under the slab, I wonder if that relates to like State Farm's new position over the last five years that if the copper line is in the aggregate below the slab, then it's not one of the 16 named perils because it was a breach due to settling or otherwise it's exterior water intrusion, something along that line. So I'd love some comments down below. Yeah. Why do you guys think the tunneling under slab line item was adopted? Straight away, I do not know. That's a good one. Yeah, let us know in the comments, whatever platform you're watching on as to your instincts, or if you've seen a scenario where tunneling under slab was required and the carrier covered yeah. it, and what was the purpose behind it? That would be great. Uh, next new line items, parking lot striping. We always get a little excited when new commercial line items have been added to the price list. So now we have uh, curb parking lot striping, handicap parking stalls, and general parking stalls. Uh, so for those commercial related losses, when you're paying those parking lot stripes, so that's fantastic to have those additions. Uh, fluorescent lighting, there's new uh, uh, items here. We'll jump in here. You'll see this is uh, uh, both labor and material for the ballast and the installation labor uh, for fluorescent lights ballast and the high grade ballast. Uh, so we have new line items for fluorescent lights. Bird spikes. Uh, we've got three new bird spikes line items ranging from, you know, normal down to standard up to high grade. I wish uh, all the luck in the world to those trying to decide what the difference between a standard grade bird spike and a high grade bird can spike. We, can we just go with average grade bird spikes? That would have been... Uh, sure. That seems reasonable and customary in most scenarios, but somebody out there has a high grade bird spike, otherwise the line I don't yeah. want to so, um, Yeah. Well I don't want to be on either side of that argument. So let's fair, just default fair. to the non-defined average grade. Uh, and even standard grade in its terminology is confusing because, you know, standard grade is cheaper than the average grade. The average grade is the one that has the non-stated value, and that's how it goes for all building material throughout the price list. So uh, just a lot of folks, will they'll conflate standard with average. So know that it's economy, standard, average, high grade, uh, premium grade, deluxe grade, custom. So Right, I think I got them in there. Yeah, um, I think so. We've got three new line items as well here with cleaning kayaks and canoes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's cool. This my is perfect kayaks, for you. Yeah, my kayaks haven't been used in two months, so I do need to clean them, although I don't think I'm going to get a carrier to pay for who, it. Yeah, who are you billing? You billing Hippo uh, for that? Mostly myself. I think that's where I'm going to go with that one. Okay. Um, but that's 26 new line items added to the April 2020 price list. Some reactive Ooh. to the COVID-19 environment some reactive to needs just in the general price list of what didn't exist before. Uh, and as we see with a lot of these additions, oftentimes there's a particular loss or catastrophe uh, where certain things are affected and uh, there wasn't a line item previously existing, they've been added. Let me take that segue down to the personal property price list items mm -hmm. that were added to April, 2020. Um, you'll have things like uh, boat oars, kayak paddles, every, Possible archery, arrow, rest, arm guard, bow stabilizer, uh, golf glove, hunting call, hunting tree stand, swim fin, surfboard. Uh, who do you think had a loss at their house that ended up with all these line items being created? Clearly, Ted Nugent had a significant fire in Q4 2019. So here we are. This Whoever this cat was, he was active, man. He was making it happen. So, all right, we got a lot of new content line items. New personal property. Online. Like how many different choices for archery do we have? Wow. A lot, but, you know, policyholders get pretty extreme in their activities. So now they yeah. think they And now the, uh, these, uh, these adjusters have to figure out the difference between a broadhead, a release, a stabilizer, an arrow rest, what could go wrong? I'm sure so, policyholders will be great at educating the people as to right. why they have it, right? Right, right. That's that right. was a high-grade archery release. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> like maybe like a bow. I don't know. That's just incredibly granular, but good for That's them. That's fair. Jumping into some of these priceless item modifications. We've covered all the new line items that existed. Uh, I'm actually going to bring this over uh, my April to the right, and I'll see on the left here, I have March. So I'm going to jump to the April versus March comparison. Yeah. Uh, bringing back up this, you'll see a lot of these are modifying note fields and text mm -hmm. fields. There's not major changes uh, to yep. a lot of these line items, but there are six changes overall, four okay. yield and two description that I thought were warranted highlighting here. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, they called out um, do, 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 HMR, H-E-P-A-F-W right here. Yep. Modified labor component yield of plus assembly for these two line items and then the WTR categories here. Yep. So I've got March on the left, April on the right. Let's start with the HMR for exposed framing floor. You'll see that the San Diego unit price went up from 85 cents to 87 cents. So maybe an increase of about 2%. And then the walls here went down from 61 cents to 50 cents, more of a decrease around you know, 15%. Um, so for those floors, they are decreasing the yield, which mm -hmm. results in a increase in the price. And on the wall sides of things, they're actually increasing the yield, which would decrease the price. Uh, so, you know, they're just trying to tailor those line items more to those specific activities when it comes to HEPA vacuuming, the exposed framing. When you look at these line items in combination with the dry ice and soda blasting, there's understandably been a focus on this exposed framing treatment line items uh, yeah. in the April update, uh, which can affect claims on a large scale now that they exist and have been updated and changed. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to add here was the description changes. So one of the fun ones, uh, is that specifically for DMO and PMT, mask SFC, they removed the reference to corrugated. So we've fielded questions on Xactimate Ninjas in the past about, hey, what do I use for RAM board? What line item would I use for RAM board? Yeah. And we've always pointed to the corrugated cardboard and tape, but there's always been a little confusion about the word corrugated. So finally, they just removed it. And now you have a more applicable line item for your RAM board for any kind of cardboard and tape protection that you're applying in the bank process. I didn't see that until just now. That was a brilliant move, man. That made sense. I've had to explain that question, I feel like, 900 times in my career about this corrugated. So that was just the swiftest, most elegant way to constrain the arguments and settle these darn claims. So hats off, and I wish I had something to do with introducing that notion to the pricing department, but I cannot take responsibility. So... Uh, very cool that they did that. That's fair. To finish up here, um, you know, some new material components were added based on the new line items that existed. Uh, here we talked about the remove the corrugated and then uh, miscellaneous changes for April. They updated some of the fringe benefits for labor burdens in the United States. Um, so that's about it for April 2020. That's 26 new, you know, claims related activity line items, over 58 new uh, extreme contents related items. Uh, and then some yield modifications and description changes uh, to this price list as well. Uh, thank you for joining us today in the April 2020. If you're watching us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, uh, we're on Reddit now as well. Please we're crushing it on Reddit. Give us a like, give us a, a subscription uh, so that we can continue putting out this kind of great content for you guys uh, and let your industry peers know that the price list update summary for April's out and really highlights those new line items, uh, especially related to COVID-19 and what everybody's struggling with and trying to get through in the moment. So in the cool. meantime, and let's get some shares, man. If I see some shares, we'll put DJ Elliot on hooking you guys up with some stocks here and there. So let's share this out, man. We're working hard on this stuff. Harrison puts a lot of research into these babies. So let's get the word out here about these new line items. Pricing department worked hard on this. We worked hard on it. So let's spread the good word. I love it. In the meantime, enjoy the new line items, and we will see you guys in May. Thank you. See you guys.